Hey guys, it's Laura. I am answering a few questions in a photography Q&A today. Um, I asked you guys on Instagram and Facebook a couple of um, questions and I didn't ask you questions, you asked me questions. What am I even saying? <laughs> um, just like commonly asked questions that I get about photography. So let's get started. Um, do you use any presets? If so, which ones? So I have a bunch of different preset packs. I mainly gravitate towards the Messina Photos presets. They're available on Filter Grade. I'll link them down below, but they're my absolute favorite for like fashion photography. Um, yeah, anything fashion related. I love, love, love those presets. Um, they're pretty versatile too. They're really like adjustable and you can kind of take it from um, like nature to city and stuff. So those are definitely up there. Um, I have LXC also and I tend to use those more for um, for like couple shoots and um, like senior photos, that kind of stuff, more like traditional style um, photography. And then um, what else do I have? I have Visco. I honestly don't really, I have Pack 5 I don't really use it that much. I got it and then really didn't like it. Um, and then I have Dylan Kyoto. I think that's how you pronounce it. I honestly don't know. I got those um, during a filter grade sale and I use those for outdoor, anything I shoot outside. And then I also use um, clay moss and I did, I did a session today and used his presets and they look so good. I'm so excited. So I'll link those down below too along with um, the blog post that I put up about that photo session that I did today. Um, so yeah, I usually um, will cycle through presets, like I'll pull up a photo from a session when I first start editing and cycle through and figure out which set I want to use and then kind of adjust it and tweak it per photo and then kind of like go on from there per session. So question number two, how do you make your picture so sharp? So I find that it really, really depends on the lens that you have. Um, I mainly use a 58, a Nikon 58mm um, 1.4, and honestly, I know the reviews are kind of bad about the lens because it is kind of hard to focus at 1.4. You have to be so still um, at 1.4 to get it to really be that sharp, um, but if that's the case, then I just kind of crank it up. So like, if I'm finding that I'm not um, focusing very well at 1.4, I um, will move it up to like 1.6 or 1.8 or something to kind of help that. Um, and then also I take up the sharpness in post-processing. Um, is photography a full-time job for you? Why or why not? Right now it's kind of a part-time job, but like half, half the time, you know what I mean? Like I have split my time between two different things. So I also, also do social media management. Um, so it's kind of a part-time job. I wouldn't, or kind of a full-time job. I wouldn't really categorize it as part-time because I'm doing it most of my days, but, um, I would definitely do it as my full-time job if I booked enough, but I'm just not booking enough at the moment to like commit to doing it full-time. Um, I guess my ultimate goal would be to, um, take pictures and like lookbooks for brands, um, for clothing brands. So, Hopefully I'll get to that point and be able to do it completely full time someday. <laughs> um, how do you work with brands and what's the best way to contact them? So honestly, it's all about con like bugging them, to be honest. Like I have DM'd so many different brands and a lot of them just won't respond to you. Um, but I just come up with like a narrative, like a generic narrative and um, say, hello, like I really love your brand. I do photography, like would you be interested in um, working with me. Um, I live in this area, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll copy and paste that and um, ideally email it just because it's more professional than a DM. But if you can't find their email, um, you can just DM them. Um, but I have gotten a, a lot of good jobs through doing that. So honestly, just reaching out, like just do your best to like contact as many companies as you can. Best times to post on social media or do you post randomly? So... I use an app called when to post and you can hook up your accounts to it and it'll tell you the best um, days and times to post um, for a particular um, account that you have. So it'll like hook up to your account and you um, sign up through your Instagram and it kind of monitors your activity and it'll tell you the best time of day to post. And I've actually found it to be super, super helpful and accurate. So I would definitely download that. How do you become more fluid in directing how to pose? 
So a lot of the times, um, even when I'm working with models, I will actually like do the pose for them. Like I, if they're like sitting on the ground, I will sit, sit on the ground next to them and do the pose that I'm talking about. Um, just so they can kind of see what it looks like on someone else and they can mimic that and then from there um, Obviously don't touch them unless you have permission or something, but um, Just kind of direct them like oh like move your hand a little bit this way or move it that way um, But usually they can just get it from watching um, or listening to you Direct them like can you shift your weight this way? Can you turn your head a little bit this way? Um yeah. Um, how do you decide a price for your sessions? So right now my prices are all based on amount of photo return and I don't set a time limit other than my Instagram session, which I'm thinking about taking off my site um, just because it is so inexpensive. My Instagram session is only $100. Um, it's an hour worth of shooting. Um, a lot of people kind of take it for granted and expect more out of it because it's only 18 returned photos and they expect more out of it and turn it into a portrait session. It's really intended for um, someone that wants to get stylized photos for Instagram, like at a coffee shop or um, just taking pictures of them, like lifestyle type photos, not really portraits. So um, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm, I'm probably going to take it off because that's all people are really booking. Um, but other than that, it's based on the amount of return photos. I never set a time limit on my sessions. Um, I usually dedicate almost like an entire day to a session and I wound up shooting for like four hours. Um, I know that's not super conventional and I should probably be more careful with my time, but I just feel like you should shoot until you feel that you've gotten every shot that you need to get for your client and you shouldn't put a time constraint on it because um, I just like don't want to disappoint my client and I want them to be happy with the images. Is Squarespace worth the price? Yes, Squarespace is definitely worth the price. I absolutely love my Squarespace site. Um, it's so customizable. You can honestly pick any template. They're so clean and so, so aesthetically pleasing. Um, I've used a couple of different sites. I've used Weebly, I've used WordPress, I've self-hosted. Honestly, for photography and portfolios, Squarespace is the absolute best. Um, I wouldn't do anything else. And honestly, if it's your business, it's not that expensive. I think I pay like $130 a year, which is like one session, like half a session. So worth of money. So it's honestly not that much. Uh, what camera body do you use and what lenses are your go-to? So I have a Nikon D750. Um, I love it. It's like the best thing ever. Um, I honestly would probably have gone with Canon, but all of my equipment are hand-me-downs and like in my family, like um, they all do photography, so um, I didn't really have the option, but for Nikon, I think this is the absolute best. Um, and then I, I tend to switch between three different lenses, so I have a 58mm uh, 1.4, and then I also have a 70-200mm, to 200 millimeter, um, and then I also have a 24 to 120, which is pretty wide angle. So I only really use that one on rare occasions. Um, the 70 to 200 is super versatile and I really like it. But honestly, the 58 is like nothing compares. Like I try to switch to another lens and just can't. And I end up switching back because the 58 is just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful portrait lens. And it just looks so creamy and just amazing. So 